Welcome once again, everybody, to Blockbuster Mentality. I'm your host, Ben. Appreciate you tuning in. Before we get started, if you could give us a subscribe, give us a subscribe, I guess, on iTunes, Spotify, whatever you want to do, whatever you're listening on, give us a, a review rating we'd really appreciate it. it helps us out a lot been climbing those charts uh follow us on instagram at blockbuster mentality and twitter at blockbuster cast go to our website blockbustermentality.com. that's where you get all the updates on the show when new episodes come out and all that fun stuff uh today we have on actor nelson franklin perhaps uh he's been in a lot of things uh the the office he was the it guy nick uh new girl robbie and the new uh not the new girl but robbie and new girl uh he's been in blackish he's uh gonna be in being the ricardos with javier bardem and and nicole kidman so we talk about that a little bit but uh the movie we break down is perhaps our first wes anderson film i believe and that would be 1998's rushmore um and uh yeah it was a great talking with nelson he's a great guy super nice super down to earth had a lot of fun chatting with him um and yeah that's uh that's it all right bye no but uh but yeah i hope you guys enjoy this episode here is my conversation with nelson franklin You're uh, coming in from Florida right now? Yeah, yeah, Tampa, Florida, unfortunately. Um, <laughs> I wasn't going to say anything like that. Don't worry. <laughs> no, it's, uh, yeah, I moved here when I was like, you know, 15, 16, and from Detroit originally, which isn't much better, but, you know. <laughs> and you're, you've always been a California boy, right? Yes, I'm a native Los Angelino, which is, um, I mean, it, it's not rare. It's what it's rare for is like the film and television industry. I feel like yeah. nobody. Right, yeah. Everyone strives to go out there to become big, but you you were you were already there. You're like, I'm here, might as well might as well just go for it. Um <laughs> and then yeah, it's the thing, same thing with Florida. There's I mean, not entertainment industry wise, but it's uh there's like no natives here. It's uh <laughs> it's it's I a rarity. <laughs> yeah, yeah. A lot of uh you know, a lot of people seek it out for retirement stuff, you know. Yeah, exactly. It's uh yeah, the the old adage of you know coming here when you retire and i'm here in my 30s so you know what are you gonna yeah. do <laughs> uh what uh so what's going on man what you, you you working on anything are you promoting anything what's uh what's been going on yeah i've been working a little bit uh yeah i mean the last time i worked was like the last week of august um and it feels like that was six months ago or something i just <laughs> not working but it's you know it's a weird time in the industry right now of course i mean it's getting way better every day because of the uh, pandemic of course but um i do have some stuff i i over the summer i had a couple of really nice jobs which i was blown away by because everything one of the byproducts of the pandemic is that we can't go in to audition anymore everything is self-taped which is my least favorite way to audition for anything i hate really um so you don't like so Sorry. you'd rather have people like staring at you while you're doing it or do you yeah. like feed off of people? Like, is that your thing? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, look, it's, y- yes, it's, it's harder in that. Like it's more stressful because you're standing in front of the people who would or would not hire you or whatever, or casting directors you're trying to impress or whatever, but that's what makes the payoff so much better. You know, like I went to acting school. I'm like a theater guy. So this is something that I like have been working on my whole life. It's like being in front of an audience and making it work. And that's sort of, uh, I feel like it's part of my, it's part of the package for me. It's just like being good in the room and having people enjoy my personality live or whatever. But when it's on zoom, it's kind of like, we will read the scene now. And like, who am I looking at? I have no idea. You know, <laughs> I look at the camera. I'm like, um, yeah. So Zoom, well, yeah, that's the other thing they do is Zoom, Zoom auditions. So it's like, which, what's worse, Zoom or self-tape? I don't know. But <laughs> um, uh, I got a couple of jobs on tape this summer. I, I'm in the Sorkin uh, Lucille Ball biopic oh, that's coming out. Nice. Yeah, I just saw that teaser that just came out. That's, uh, yeah. Yeah, that's man. Where you, so how, what's your role in that? I play like a, like a terrible, I mean, 
terrible by today's standards, of course, but I'm, I'm like, um, I'm a CBS executive who keeps telling Lucille Ball that she can't do any of the things she wants to do. You know, I'm there telling her you can't be married to a non-white person on TV. That's too Oh much yeah. And then she gets pregnant and I'm like, you can't be pregnant on TV. You know, you can't talk about the baby on TV. You can't do this. And it's just all the like horrible, like racist, sexist stuff that was uh, normal back then. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, how, so it was how, fun. how surreal was that to, I mean, be working with the great Nicole Kidman? I mean, that's got to be. <laughs> it, was, it was crazy. I'll be, look, I'll be perfectly honest with you. I was a little weirded out that, I mean, look that she was playing Lucille Ball, it, it didn't matter who it would, if it was Nicole Kim, if it was anybody, it's like, who can ever do that? Who could ever, you know? Sure, yeah. Uh, she, I was blown away. She really did impress me a lot. The voice, the sort of um, physicality and everything, it really, she worked on it a lot and I was impressed. You know, did so. you uh, work with, uh, Javi, is it Javier Bardem? Is he the one playing? Yeah. Okay, I, I was about to Google it. I was like, let me make sure that's right. <laughs> uh, but is he, uh, I mean, he seems like a super nice guy, but I mean, just oh, the yeah. roles he plays, he's just so intense. Like, what? Yeah. <laughs> is it, uh, I, I assume he's not as intense in person as he is, uh, or, or maybe he is. Maybe maybe you are going to tell me something different. I don't know. Now, he's a lovely guy. Um, you know, I was... I'll be honest with you, I was a little bit more starstruck by him just because I, you know, his sort of brand is more uh, what I'm interested in. And like, honestly, I saw No Country for Old Men five or six times in the theater. It was like my record holding theater visiting movie (laughs) in the last. Um, But he was great. You know, he was very nice. Um, Again, this is all happening during the pandemic. So everyone's kind of like, you know, we're all sort of like (laughs) crazy, right? You know, together in a way and like, um, Nicole had just come from Australia where they had no COVID at that time. And it's, they have it now, <laughs> but, uh, um, of she course, was like, I can't believe I have to wear masks. We don't have that in Australia. I'm like Jesus. Uh, yeah. Must be nice. Right. Must be nice. Um, <laughs> but really the, the main thing was working with Sorkin, um, uh, yeah. and he, uh, he was the yeah, best. That's... He was just like doing a play. I'll be honest with you. He's a very theatery guy. He did a lot of that stuff in his life and um i mean could you could you tell a difference right away in his script like it it, like because i mean he's known for obviously his dialogue and everything like could you right away just tell like this is different or sure uh anytime i like get an audition ready i always have to memorize it which might seem obvious but some people don't they hold it in their hands and you know look down or whatever i can't just my training or whatever and certain auditions are really hard to memorize and other auditions are easy to memorize. And it, it'll surprise you sometimes like this, that Sorkin one was like, it was a huge, it was like 12 pages or something, but I memorized it really fast because the writing is good. It feels good to say it feels natural. Right. And sometimes when I'm auditioning for like a two page little nothing role, I'm like, I can't get this. What am I supposed to say? Oh, I say, yeah. And then yeah, again at the thing, whatever, like it's just harder to embody it or whatever, but you know, Sorkin's uh, pro it was amazing. Yeah, I bet. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. <laughs> Back to Javier. Yeah, with No Country for Old Men, I'd just be terrified just from that alone. <laughs> <laughs> do I do, do I let him do a coin flip on me? Do what? What do I do? <laughs> yeah, I got to see one of his most intense scenes, which was incredible because it was a scene where all the all the executives are in the office. You know, sort of uh, the movie sort of focuses around um, a period in time where. Uh, Lucille Ball was about to get blacklisted. She was accused of being a communist and she sort of got out of it amazingly. But there was a minute there where they were, and she was the most famous person on TV, the highest rated show, blah, blah, blah. And then, you know, uh, got in a lot of trouble because she had marked something down about communism when she was like a little girl filling out a questionnaire or something. And um, so there's this scene where all the network executives are in there sort of like saying like, what the fuck are we going to do? And then Javier's like, everybody leave the room. And then we all leave. And then I just get to sit there and watch on the monitors as he has his most like volatile, incredible. Oh. Scene. It was like amazing. I was just sitting there like, Oh <laughs> yeah. yeah. Wow. Oh man. Yeah. It's gotta be so surreal. And just, yeah. Like I, I watched this guy five times in the theater, you know, <laughs> like <laughs> yeah, yeah. this is yeah, insane. That's awesome, man. Yeah. I'm definitely looking forward to that one. What that comes out later this year, right? Or is it yeah, 2022? It comes out this year, which there's not a lot of this year left. So I know, right? <laughs> we turn around on that movie because we yeah. shot it. In, they shot it until June. It's already coming out next month. Wow, crazy! Yeah. Oscar bait. Yeah, exactly. Uh, <laughs> That's exactly it. Um, it. 
Tell me, I mean, I'd be remiss if I didn't talk about that. Th- this because, I mean, like a lot of people, uh, The Office is one of my favorite shows. Um, uh, so how how did this work with you? I didn't. Uh, I try not to do too much research because I like to find out on the show. It's more organic yeah. that way. Um, <laughs> how uh, again? We're gonna get to the movie. We're gonna get to Rushmore, folks. Yeah, Don't sure. worry. Um, right. What? Um, so like you, your character like showed up like in. Uh, end of season four is like the graphic design guy, you know, that tells Pam she should go to Philadelphia New- or New York. And yeah. then you sort of just are kind of in the background as the IT guy every few episodes here and there. Like, how did, how did that work? Did they like to call you back? Like, hey, we want you to be the IT guy. Are you the same character? Like, uh, what's what's the deal? <laughs> I think you could argue that that I could be the same guy. Sure. I mean, the reality is when I did that season four episode of the job fair, that was my first acting job. I had just oh, man. graduated. I mean, it was amazing. I just graduated from college. Uh, I graduated in 2007, almost exactly at the same time as there was a writer strike that year. Right. Um, so I spent, I got out of school and I spent sort of six months just like treading water. And then I finally, after they sort of resolved it by 2008, that was my first paying job as an actor. Uh, and, you know, a really a short, very short scene it was the bumper of the whole episode i think it was like you know 20 seconds or something yeah and i got that job because uh my then wife sorry my now wife then <laughs> she was just a pretty girl that i liked yeah. uh, i my my manager's assistant had submitted me for that job because sometimes that those sort of like tiny little bit parts get passed down and she sort of just you know they sort of throw all their people at the wall and see who sticks and uh, yeah, I, I booked that job and it, that casting director in particular is a woman named Allison Jones who casts all the good stuff. Yeah. Everything you want. <laughs> um, and I ended up working with her a, a, a hell of a lot more. She did Veep and Scott Pilgrim yeah. and uh, a handful of other like really critical jobs for me. But but that was my first job. And basically a couple of years later, they were casting this IT guy role and Allison uh she called me to, she, she wanted to bring me in. And she said, actually, you can't come in because you already played someone else on the show. Uh, and I was like, Oh fuck. I didn't realize it'd be like that, but yeah, it makes sense. Okay. And I want to like ruin the, the illusion. Uh, <laughs> right. and, uh, yeah. And then about a week later they called me back and they're like, yeah, we read a bunch of people. It just seems like you would be better for this. Uh, <laughs> and I, <laughs> and I met with Greg Daniels and he said, um, if anybody asks, you know, just say that wasn't you. <laughs> uh, and we'll take it from there. Uh, and, uh, and that was it. And it was look, honest, honestly, it was a quick run. Um, I got a different job where I was the lead on a different show. And so it was a really sort of heartbreaking decision I had to make with my team or what have you, my agent and my manager, where it was like, do you want to keep popping in for two minutes on the office every other week and get paid 2,500 bucks? Or would you like to star on your own show? and like sort of get your career off the ground. And I was like, all right. So they, yeah, <laughs> they, uh, they whipped up that exit for me the night before. It was amazing. They handed it, they handed me that monologue the morning of at like 6 a.m. And like, you're going to flip everyone off and go ape shit. And, uh, oh, wow. So that was a last minute thing that, yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> that um, you left. No one remembers your name of the show, but even Jim, <laughs> you know, he doesn't remember your name. You know, so. yeah, yeah. <laughs> That was That's a treasured great. memory working on that show. Everybody was amazing. I'm sure, they also, yeah. They all sort of knew what was going on. They're like, "That's it. We're living the dream here." Like, <laughs> can you imagine what it must have been like? And the other thing, it was just an easy work day because that whole show happens in the same room. It's yeah. already lit. It's already right. set up. There's no, you know, location. Well, there's rarely, but there, you know, you just sort of get there. I was done sure. by like 11 a.m. every time I worked there. It was amazing. Oh man, I, lo- I love how they treat it like it's the MCU or something. Oh, your character was already in uh, yeah. this episode, so it just it just wouldn't work. <laughs> oh, that's a, good. This whole Netflix plus pandemic thing brought it back in a huge way. The Office, I mean. Um, oh yeah, yeah. I have that's... a half brother who's fifteen, and him and all his friends watched The Office for the first time during the pandemic because they were stuck at home. 
Oh <laughs> man. <laughs> uh to watch it for the first time again. I'm probably yeah, yeah. on my on my on my first thousandth time. So, you yeah. know, it's yeah. uh I I have no life. Um no, but uh no, that's that's great. And of course, I love you in uh in New Girl. That's uh, another great show. That's just fantastic and yeah, just love uh the addition of of your character. I love when you punch the woman in the, in the face in that one episode <laughs> with Schmidt's uh, bachelor party or uh that was just fantastic to 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 a Katy perry song you you punch punch a woman in the face so <laughs> i did how do, indeed how does that work do, do they play the music uh while you guys are doing that or is it no is it just no no oh, man I'm, I'm sure if, if it was synced up in any way they would have yeah <laughs> yeah but, uh... <laughs> uh but yeah great stuff um but yeah uh we like to have on uh actors filmmakers everything of the like to to break down a movie to get their perspective on uh the art form and and just talk about one of their favorite movies and you chose uh, the now classic 1998 ancient film uh, Rushmore, uh, Wes Anderson's Rushmore. Uh, so first of all, why this movie? Why did you pick this movie out of all the movies you could have chose to talk about? Uh, good question. I, you know, I have a handful of favorite movies, and if I had to like nail one down, you know, life or death, I'd, I'd probably say that my favorite movie is Raging Bull or something like that. But yeah. Um, this is was a very important movie for me as a young man. I mean, like it came out when I was about fourteen, and I didn't see it until I was fifteen, I think. And Max Fisher, the the main character, is also fifteen, and it really it was the perfect time for me to see that movie. Uh, it really invigorated me. I was just starting out doing high school theater at that time, and high school theater is a big part of that movie, also uh, in a really special way. And I just really felt a strong connection to the medium when I saw that as a young man. I never had any ambitions of being an actor when I was a kid. Um, I took my first drama class because it was the only open elective. I They stuck yeah. me in there randomly and I was like, I can't do this. You got to call the school dad and get me out of this. Uh, right. <laughs> but, uh, you know, it, it was a really a sort of uh, a big moment for, for me when I saw that movie because I was I really, re- you know, not that I related so much with Max Fisher because he's he's pretty out there. But right. I just related with the experience of like, yeah, I'm just starting to figure out what performance is. And and this is the most sort of close to me that it's ever been. Um, and of course, I'm really excited to see uh, 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 oh, geez. French Dispatch, French Dispatch, of course. Yeah. yeah. And it just sort of reminded me that Wes Anderson's whole aesthetic, you know, it came from that, you know, I mean, yeah, his whole sort of quaint style or whatever at back then it was at a necessity, you know, he wasn't getting big budgets or anything he was yeah. doing. And, and it was sort of the most pure version of the Wes Anderson movie. Um, yeah, if you couldn't get, you know, the big budget film, you had to be as creative as as possible. I mean, look at, you know, Reservoir Dogs, Pulp Fiction. I mean, oh, I, yeah. you know, Pulp Fiction obviously was a little bit bigger budget than than this movie, but you know, even Reservoir Dogs. But yeah, I mean, that kind of, you know, filmmaker has to really their talent has to really shine through to to make an impression. Yeah. And uh so are you uh are you a Wes Anderson guy? Or are you everything yeah, like, absolutely I love yeah. Wes Anderson. Uh you know I love Royal Tenenbaums also when I saw that that was very impressionable to me as a teenager and you know a lot of it is about performance and it's not exactly a high concept films although they are starting to get there now <laughs> with yeah. the Grand Budapest and stuff like that. It's all getting sure. great. And you might you might even say it's getting played out. I don't know if I would go that far, but you know I, I really appreciate the guy and what he's doing. I love his musical tastes. Uh, he always has a very strong connection to the music, which I'm a big you know I'm a music guy, and uh, it's just um, it's it's a special sort of feeling you get when you watch those movies, where it's like it feels pretty homemade. You know what I mean? Yeah, I like that a lot. Definitely. And yeah, I mean, I can only, uh, yeah, you, you were yeah 15 when you saw it and yeah, just kind of relating, relating to him in, in certain aspects. And yeah, I mean, this is just such a, you know, unique, um, coming of age tale, <laughs> you know, it's, yeah. uh, you don't, you don't see them like this, especially when, you know, it's, uh, 
someone who has a crush on someone who's much older than them. And, you know, it's, it's, well, I guess it, it, the graduate, I mean, obviously that's, right, right. that's, that's something, you know, that you, I guess you can compare it to, but a little, little different, a little different, yeah, a, little, a little more, a little more comedy, a little more stylized. Um, and then, I mean, you can't go wrong when you have uh, Bill Murray in your flick and that's the, the guy you're fighting with to you know get the girl you know <laughs> he i mean that's for me um that's like a top three performance for bill murray it's just shockingly good and you really i mean part of it i feel like part of the vibe that's coming through is like yeah he did it for 10 bucks and he didn't give a shit and that sort of comes through in the performance but also he's very sweet and childlike himself uh in that there's that competition between him and and um Max Fisher, uh, um, Schwartzman. Schwartzman, yeah, yeah. And the only way for that competition to work is if they're both like fifteen-year-olds, in a sense. You know? <laughs> right. <laughs> it's just, uh, it's very. Sp- I also want to say the casting of Olivia Williams, Mrs. Cross, the 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 woman they're both after. Yeah. Just so well cast. She's amazing, first of all, in the movie. But like, I'm seeing her as if, as an actual fifteen-year-old and being like, "Oh, I'm in love with her. That's it." They, right. Yeah. yeah. I no, no, there was never a moment where I was like, oh, I don't know if this is believable, but that this kid would be into her. It's like absolutely was dead on, you know. And, and it's yeah, because I mean, she's you know she's gorgeous and everything, but like she's not like your typical like leading actress like star yeah. of a movie. Like it's absolutely. it's the way she carries herself and the way you know she, you know, um, obviously her looks, uh, you know, but but yeah, just the way her she carries herself. I mean, I'm sure the accent plays into it yeah. a little bit, but yeah, it's just, you can, you can understand his infatuation with her. It's, it's so believable. Yeah. You're, you're right on there with the, with the casting. Um, and then, uh, I mean, you got the great Brian Cox in this, uh, Amazing. Yeah. uh, yeah, <laughs> you it's- have the kid who played, uh, uh, Dennis the Menace in this. Um, <laughs> yeah. so. Little sidekick. Uh, is that Dennis Menace kid? His little blonde sidekick there. Yeah, yeah, that's Dennis Jeez. the Menace from uh, yeah the with uh, Walter Matthau. So oh, wow. yeah, well, he was super blast good. from the past. <laughs> the, the the kids, the young kids, play a big role in this movie more than because I watched it yesterday. I just wanted to take a refresher. And- good, thank you. Hey Nelson, thank you so much because. I mean, we, we never, you know, harp on anyone for not watching it, but sure. I'm so glad you prepared. Thank you. I, I just watched it uh, this afternoon, so I just have to say I, a special thank you to you for, for oh, actually oh. re-watching the movie. <laughs> well, it's my pleasure. It's one of my favorite movies ever. Uh, you know, it was super uh, easy to watch. I mean, what, what do you yeah. want to do? <laughs> and, you, and you pick up different stuff every time you watch it. You know, I, I watched it the most times when I was like a young, like a tween or whatever. Right. The tween. No, I guess I was like. Eh, yeah, that's. I was watching. Wait, wait, we'll call it then. tween. We'll call it tween. That's yeah, funny. sure. <laughs> but now, as an like, I'm fully an adult now, and it it's still it's even better. I would say. Yeah. Um, the the writing is so good. I know that Owen Wilson wrote the script with with Wes Anderson, and there's some lines in there when they're like when Max Fisher's doing his Vietnam play <laughs> at the end. They got this line in there. It's like the greatest piece of like uh, adapted <laughs> into a play, right? Where the, the Scottish kid asked the Dennis the Menace kid, "I guess I should know all their names." I'm so sorry. Uh, no, we do this all the time. Don't worry. Yeah. It's uh, this is the show. <laughs> because how long have you been in country? Because they're in Vietnam, <laughs> and the kid says, "I ain't even here, Sergeant. I'm still in Cheyenne, Wyoming." <laughs> and it's like, oh man, like that is as good as any '70s era. <laughs> vietnam dialogue that you'll ever hear in your life i mean that's incredible and uh, you know there's a lot of that kind of stuff going on in the movie where kids talking like adults is very effective to me yes i yeah i would have to agree it's uh it's (laughs) it makes me giggle um i uh so so you know into the story a little bit now uh herman Bill Murray's character, he he sees something in Max Fisher, Jason Schwartzman's character. Uh, Because, you know, they initially, you know, you see Bill Murray, the first time we see him, he's given like a speech to the school. Obviously, he's like some sort of donator or something like, you know, or or, that's not the word, but you know what I'm saying. Um, (laughs) He uh, and, you know, Fisher obviously is, you know, uh, enthralled by what Herman's saying, but 
when he goes up to Herman, Herman, he, he, he feels something towards this Fisher. Now, what what is that, do you think? I mean, are, are we thinking just he's... Uh, like, I mean, now that I say that, I'm thinking about what you said about, you know, just a couple of 15 year olds running around. Is he is he kind of just seeing what he could have been, what he wants his sons to be, maybe? Like, what are your thoughts? That's on exactly that? it. I think that's why he's able to dive in so fast. Well, in his speech that he's giving, the, the like, it's like a chapel speech, which also resonated with me because I went to a school that had chapel twice a week when I was. Oh, there. man. <laughs> um, not a religious guy, but it was just a good school. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and, um, he his speech was about you know hey look if you go to this school you're around rich people all the time but for those of you who aren't rich just remember to hang tough or whatever and that you know obviously max fisher's very uh he's not rich uh and right. <laughs> immediately perks up and he's like yeah yeah this guy gets it and of course herman uh, bill murray's character has the worst he's got this pair of boys that are like just big time assholes yeah uh, rough housing you know the opposite of me but like kids who like you know, throw each other down on the floor all the time and are wrestling constantly, love right. fighting and all that. And he hates it. He's in hell. Uh, so a kid like Fisher is just exactly what he's been missing for the last 15 years. You know, his life is sort of, he needs the creativity because his job is also sort of pretty bleak. He's like the foreman. Of, well, he owns some kind of company, Steve, yeah. some shit. Right. <laughs> so having that sort of source of childlike wonderment is something he's been missing, I think, in his life. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, it's uh, yeah, because yeah, even at the the birthday party that he he gets uh, Max invited to because the other kids wouldn't invite him. Yeah. Um, like he, he looks over at his wife and she's like flirting with some dudes and <laughs> what 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 is he's just throwing golf balls in the pool like what? <laughs> yeah, it's incredible. He's I just feel like they were like, hey man, you know, do your thing out here uh, in the scene or something. I mean, yeah. It's one of the all-time best sort of Bill Murray. He's he's wearing Budweiser swim shorts. And <laughs> yes, he gets up on the diving board with like a full like a triple whiskey. That he yes, just like, and he jumps in with a cigarette in his mouth. He's just like he's like two weeks away from killing himself. You know <laughs> exactly. Uh, it's uh, amazing. Yeah, it's yeah, it's so Bill Murray, and it's just yeah, it's just like P- Bill Murray just not giving a fuck, and but like at the same time like you could tell he's having fun. Like he's, it's not like Bill Murray's this grump, um, you know, that just, you know, all right, I'll do this movie for the money. Obviously he didn't do it for the money. Um, yeah. So it's like, obviously, you know, as we can see with his, uh, many, um, appearances in Wes Anderson films, he obviously loves what this guy's doing. Um, well, this, uh, this one really revived his career because he was huge in the eighties and, uh, late eighties. And then I feel like it some, somewhere a couple of years into the nineties sort of started falling off. Yeah. Um, this brought him back in a huge way. He got nominated for an Academy award for this, which he should have won. Let's be real. Yeah. And if you watch that Academy Awards, you can YouTube him losing. Like, he's pissed. I don't know if that clip <laughs> still exists, but he's not trying to hide it or anything. He's just like, because, you know, I mean. <laughs> yeah, I, I remember you, he like just kind of made a face like. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> uh, so I feel I feel like he's maybe indebted to Wes in a way where he's like, you know, this guy sort of he res- resuscitated my career. And also, like, the movies are great also, you know. Yeah, absolutely. Um, how, how about all the. Uh, the clubs that Max is a part of. Oh my goodness. He's just fencing. Um, he eventually invents the kite club. Um, were you, were you a part of any clubs? Were you a, were you a club guy? Um, not really. I mean, (laughs) when I started getting into theater accidentally, it became, it sort of took over my whole free schedule. I'm, I'm six foot five. And so I used to play basketball. Uh, my coaches were, devastated when i was like sorry guys i'm gonna do uh the musical this year instead of uh and they're like are you fucking kidding me yeah <laughs> um, and i used to do stuff like uh model trains you know just like really nerdy right stuff like that uh online gaming what have you but uh the the theater was really a special thing sort of brought me out of my shell and then got me social and stuff that was my main and that's a huge part of max's thing too that's the whole reason it gets into that. right at schools, he wrote a, uh, a play when he was like seven years old. <laughs> so they got yeah. him in on a scholarship. Right. Yeah. There's, uh, yeah. The, yeah. Cause they, yeah, allude to obviously his mother dying. And then he, you know, kind of is drawn to this, uh, uh, 
let's I'm I'm cheating by looking at IMDb. That's why I'm, I know it. the characters' names. Uh, Rosemary Cross is yeah. the Olivia Williams character. Um, yeah, uh, she obviously you know lost her husband. Um, so they kind of can relate to each other in that aspect. Um, but what drew drew her to uh, or drew him to her was the library book that had a quote written in it. Uh, I should have the direct quote in it but yeah it's something about like if you know how to live life um uh extraordinarily or or something like that uh you shouldn't you know it's a you should not uh keep it to yourself some something along those lines uh twitter right. will tear me apart and tell me what it, the line is um like but a, like a uh uh jacques uh Cousteau cloak or i mean uh you know uh who's the jacques um the, the diver um Jacques the diver. That is, yeah, yeah that's him. That's that's who it is. <laughs> uh, Jacques Cousteau, excuse me. It was like yeah. a Jacques Cousteau quoted that he, because it was like a deep scene. But it was an interesting scene because he sees that somebody wrote in the book and he immediately wants to turn them in for like vandalism. <laughs> right. But then as soon as he sees that it's a beautiful woman, it's like, oh, wait a second. This is. He's like, oh, this quote's actually very nice. I, I, I like this quote. Uh, let, let me, I, I got to pull up the quote now. There we go. When one man, for whatever reason, has the opportunity to lead an extraordinary life, that extraordinary, that was the word I was looking for, uh, he has no right to keep it to himself. Which, yeah, yeah Jacques Cousteau, like you said, um, is, is a, that's a very deep quote, you know, and, uh, in, and I'm sure, I'm sure Max Fisher thinks that applies to him as a great man. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 Because what does he say when he first meets Bill Murray? You know, if you if you find, you know, what you love, you know, you should just keep doing it for the rest of your life. <laughs> for yeah. me, that's attending Rushmore. <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, the, the whole relationship between uh, Jason Schwartzman and Olivia Williams, that is it. There's a lot of room for Olivia Williams to be amazing there, because as a as a kid who's sort of like a super spectrum kid he'll just say whatever to her and she has to take that in stride as an, as the adult in the situation as the teacher. And, and right. he's up her dead husband. He'll just name him constantly. What about your dead husband, Edward Alvin? And instead of her like breaking down, she sort of has to keep it together. There's a lot going on in the face there where she's just sort of simultaneously trying to hide her own emotions as the like teacher adult in the room, but also trying to like, get him to stop hitting on her you know it's a very yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's so true yeah because he, he keeps bringing up these things and like saying things out of turn and it's just like it makes you squirm but then her reaction kind of brings you back like okay he's a kid you know we're gonna understand what what he's saying and everything um do you, do you think she she leads him on at all do you think uh she should have put a stop to anything what uh or is he just a crazy kid I think it's, a, I'm sure most of it is him. I, I'll, I'll say that when they first meet on the bleachers and he lights her cigarette, she's a little interested in him in that scene. Like she kind of like keeps looking because he plays it like so cool. Like the coolest yeah. thing ever played. Lights, his, <laughs> lights her cigarette, bounces. And then she sort of is like, oh, uh, and sort of eggs him on to come back into the scene. And that, but it, it ends there. After she sort of realizes what's going on, then she's very, very upfront with him. He's just, you know, he's a special kid. Oh. Yeah, <laughs> he, he's special, all right. <laughs> um, yeah, so yeah, it's uh, yeah, just it, uh, it's such an e you know, it, the movie just flows just so easy, and it's just such a easy watch, uh, again, with these with these actors. I think, in this, I think this is Jason Schwartzman's like premiere, like his his first you know, film. Um, obviously, you know, as with a mother, uh, that is, uh, his uncle's what Francis Ford Coppola, I think. Yeah. And <laughs> so. I remember reading about him a lot when I first saw the movie and that he had a Rushmore like uh crest put on a, a blazer just for the audition. And then like, I mean, what a bullseye for someone like Wes Anderson probably loved that. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Um, and, uh, and yeah, like just again, part of the reason why it was so important to me, it was like this kid, could be in this movie which is now my favorite movie and it was just the first thing he just sort of just jumped right in and i was like yeah okay maybe i can do that also <laughs> right yeah uh, 
So so it was was this the movie then? Would you say? I mean, you probably already answered it, really. But uh, is this what made you want to act? Yeah, for the most part, I had it. I was I was interested in it, but I could never see myself like there was no world where I was going to be like, you know, Chris Evans or some shit like that. Uh, not that I mean, I love Chris Evans, but you know, I'm not some sort of a leading man superhero. Maybe I could get there if I really put my mind to it. But like, yeah. that's not what I would. When I when I graduated from college, it was 2007, and it was sort of the rise of like Seth Rogen, and I was like, okay, a, like a pudgy Jewish guy can make something happen here, <laughs> um, and the sort of and Max Fisher, I'll assume, is also Jewish for the last name. You know? <laughs> yeah, you know, I don't know. You know. Um, yeah, it, it made me want to be an actor, and uh, and another great story is that I when I. Uh, you know, I met Jason Schwartzman when I was doing um, Scott Pilgrim versus the World. Uh, oh, right. Yeah. yeah. And I only had one scene with him, which was the like end finale scene, which was like the big showdown between Schwartzman and Michael Sarah. And I was in that scene for like, you know, eight seconds, but I was there for like 32 days or whatever because it was such yeah. an <laughs> elaborate uh, piece of filmmaking there. And I got to tell Jason, you know, like it's, I always make it my mission never to be like too grovelly to people I look up to and just like play cool. We're cool here. Right. Yeah. You know, like 19 days in, I was like, look, I got to tell you something. I saw, you know, a Rushmore when I was 15 and, you know, he was 18, I think when he shot that. Um, And so he's only a little bit older than me, but I was still like, I looked up to you so much and that's what really made me want to do it. And it's like a big deal that I'm here with you now. And, and I I was really worried about what his reaction was going to be. And it was amazing. He like, he like was tearing up and he was like, nobody's ever said anything like that to me. Oh man. I was like, Oh, this is great. This is exactly what I wanted. (laughs) Oh, that's, Oh, that's amazing. Yeah. I mean, I mean, yeah, it kind of comes full circle that you were able to actually work with the, the guy that started the movie that made you want to become an actor. And that's awesome, man. That's uh, yeah. I I know what you mean about the, the playing it cool thing. Unfortunately with this podcast, I have to like squeeze in my, uh, I really uh, appreciated everything you did. And I, I I love playing it cool, but I just, sometimes I just got to do it. Like I just had a D Wallace. Uh, she was, the mom and et um and um i i had to right before she left i had to like spill my guts out like i I really loved you you know et meant so much to me i tried to keep my cool for so long but uh but yeah (laughs) you have you have the luxury of waiting you know you can (laughs) have you ever met uh bill murray i had yeah um i guess this this is another piece of the puzzle but my dad is a screenwriter uh and he has he he has worked with Bill Murray several times? They directed a movie together, actually called The Quick Change. Um, I told you I don't cool. do any research. No, I knew your dad was a screenwriter, but yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, he he adapted a movie uh, from a book uh, called Quick Change, which is sort of a cult classic, um, starring uh, Bill Murray and uh, and uh, uh, Gina um, uh, Davis. Excuse me, I'm just like. I can't remember anybody's name. <laughs> it's all right. It's Bill Murray and Gina Davis. And um, it's about Bill Murray and Gina Davis robbing a bank in Manhattan. And they pull it off like without a hitch. But then the only problem is they can't get the fuck out of Manhattan because it's such a like shit show of a city. Like no cab, no subway, no whatever. <laughs> it's the basis of, and I have actual confirmation of it. It's like Harold and Kumar go to White Castle. All they want to do is get from point A to point B. And now it's a whole movie's worth of shit popping up. <laughs> Right. And, and um, uh, I met with John Hurwitz once, the creator of Harold and Kumar, one of the two. And he said, yeah, we based Harold and Kumar off the structure of your dad's movies. <laughs> oh, wow. Uh, <laughs> That's cool. It's the same, I mean, obviously, it's nothing to do with it, but it's, the well, same yeah. story, like, you know, the frustration of trying to, you know. But so I, I had known Bill Murray when I was a little kid, sort of like age four to six or whatever. That's when they did all their movies together. Um and you know he's obviously a very charming person and i still didn't want to be an actor i was just like yeah this is cool um (laughs) and then when i saw him in that i was like jesus christ because i don't think i'd seen him do anything up to that point that was like a piece of great acting you know it was always sort of some crazy comedy or whatever and uh he he's got a lot going on in that movie um yeah 
there's a quite a few reveals where he sort of finds out some piece of information and I'm like staring at my computer screen two inches away as he like <laughs> you could see it like ding, 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 like working through it. Um, he's great. He's a great actor. Yeah, <laughs> that he is. That he is. Uh, have you? Uh, what, what did your dad think when you when you got into acting? Was he? I can't believe I'm a father now myself. I have a I have a five month old. Son. Oh, uh, congrats! <laughs> thank you. Yeah, that's what I've been up to lately. Uh, yeah. And in a million years, I could never see myself encouraging him to <laughs> pursue a career in acting. It seems like a crazy <laughs> thing. But my dad, I got to hand it to him. He was super supportive. Uh, he had, you know, he came to see me in all of my high school plays. And he was like, I think you're good. Uh, I would tell you. I would tell you. I'm Maybe I'm super biased because I'm your father, but I think you can do this. So, you know, he gave me my blessing. Awesome. And, AP, and I went to acting school, which is like another thing where it's like, are you kidding me? How could you ever <laughs> send somebody down that path? Why oh, would you God. do this? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Why would you do this to me? Um, has uh, is, is writing an interest of yours? Uh, yeah. Uh, it's really something that I should be doing a ton of. Um, you know, um, I would say that uh, I would I would probably say that a majority of successful actors in Hollywood have written their own material or written something that they're involved with in some way. And I really should get on top of that. And I enjoy it too. It's very challenging for me. My dad is an incredible writer, very gifted in that he, he's like, all right, I got to bang out 10 pages tomorrow and he'll do it. You know, like that kind of stuff is insane. Uh, He's very, very disciplined man. Um, And I should do it, but I don't. The short answer is no, I don't. Yeah. <laughs> I, I should, I, I, but I don't. <laughs> I, I, I've had a, a, a certain amount of jobs over my career where we do a lot of ad-libbing and improvising, and that's kind of like writing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, that's true. I yeah. mean, yeah, it's... Uh, yeah, I... Yeah, I, I I, I, uh, yeah, I, I can't imagine having the patience for it. And, uh, yeah. Uh, well, oh my goodness. I didn't realize, uh, I just put this on the other day in the background, another Bill Murray movie, uh, the man who knew too little your father. It's, it looks like he's credited for the screenplay of that. Yeah. Yep. Look, at that. Right that Look at uh, that. Look at that. So you're, you know, that one. I love that movie. Yes, yeah, so that's in right? anti antitrust. I know that yeah. one. Um, yeah, so the man who knew too little antitrust. I know. I know. I know those ones. I know those yeah. ones. Uh, Look at that. You know, my dad. He's been he's been a writer for forty years, and that is that's something. I mean, look, he's not like he doesn't have like a blockbuster hit every year, but he's he's a career writer, which is yeah, that's a big, <laughs> a big achievement. You know, yeah, that's more than uh, most the most the United States can say. So <laughs> <Yeah>. that's. <laughs> That's great, um, but uh, but yeah, uh, we we go in tangents on this show. Don't worry, we 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 just you know we go we go in tangents. Um, uh, one line that always has always stuck with me for some reason. It's not like a profound line, but it's just. You're, were you were you in Vietnam? Yeah, were you in the shit? Yeah, I was in the shit. <laughs> that was to me, that line is just it's so dry. But it just—I don't know. Just uh, it's so Bill Murray. But then now seeing Jason Schwartzman now more in his career, like it's very him. Like it's just like you were in the shit. Yeah, I was in the shit. Like I don't know why. That's just that that line has always stuck out to me so much. I I, I don't know why. Um, it's super funny and again it's one of these things where if you weren't a 15 year old kid you wouldn't be asking someone about their shit experience <laughs> right <Yeah. laughs> about but Vietnam it's, it's like it's perfect and it tells you so much about retroactively because that's like in the last like 30 seconds of the movie basically <laughs> you know, or one minute or whatever it's like oh man so much more background to Bill's character as well. right um, <laughs> and that he doesn't even really care like he just sat through the most triggering play of his life. If he really was in the shit, this would have been like, he would have been having flashbacks. I'm sure. <laughs> right. Exactly. And he's able to just be like, yeah, I did that. Yeah. I did that. <laughs> Whatever. Now, do we, uh, to me, it seems like, you know, Bill Murray, Olivia Williams, Herman, and Rosemary, if we're talking characters, uh, it seems like an odd couple. Um, uh, are we to believe they get together at the end? Is, is that what we're, we're to left to believe? I would have to say no, just because, um, you know, they're visiting Guggenheim, uh, Brian Cox at the hospital and 
that's another great scene for Bill, who's now even more depressed because they broke up essentially. Right. And uh, you know, Schwartz was like, "How how is she?" And he goes, I, "I don't know. I haven't seen her in six weeks." And he's like heavily drinking and smoking in the hospital elevator, <laughs> um, pouring like the little liquor bottle into his diet coke. <laughs> one of the best pieces of stage business I've ever seen because he has the diet coke in his breast pocket, so. <laughs> He's able to just go like this with one hand. He's pouring the booze into his little <laughs> Coke can or he's like, it's like a Diet Coke or something. <laughs> it's so fucking good. Uh, and then later when, when you know, when um, Max Fisher ladders up to her, Olivia Williams, Miss Cross bedroom and sneaks in there and like, <laughs> you know, sneaks a kiss on her like a totally inappropriate. That's like the word. <laughs> but anyway, during that scene, he's she says to him like, look, that guy ran over your bike a bunch of times. I could never be with a man like that. That's crazy. So I, right. I, I guess I choose to believe that he's still living at that hotel and, uh, and he's divorced and he doesn't have anybody. Is yeah. That- yeah. Cause I, I think you could say as much as we love Bill Murray, Herman is not a good man. You know, he's, no. he's just a miserable, a miserable guy and just yeah. is, you know, wallowing over his own misery that, you know, this girl broke up with him, even though he was married. Um, for me, yeah, the, the ending is more, you know, Max kind of growing up, like saying like, you know, okay, you, you two can be together. Like, I'm fine with it. Like, you, you know, it's, it's him kind of, again, it's that coming of age aspect of him realizing, all right, I'm never going to get her. Let me just make amends with the, the people I can to. And, you know, it's, uh, yeah, it's just, yeah, for me, that's that's what what I get from it, um, which is yeah. yeah, a great a great message. Like it's it's annoying when some movies, you know, it's a I, I hate the term character development, but you do need that in the movie. I just feel like critics use that way too often, and it's just like <laughs> gets pretentious and annoying. But <laughs> you you do need uh, character development, and Max does grow in in this story which is which is good um yeah and that's tough because he's already sort of an adult as a as a kid you know the way he talks to other adults and the way right he doesn't care about rules it's sort of just sort of all about making whatever he wants happen and it's really interesting that they have him failing out of school and getting terrible grades because nobody sees him as a failure i don't think that dr guggenheim is like no oh, this kid's a hopeless wreck or whatever he's just like no i gotta expel you because you got all f's dude you just gotta get out of here i mean right you're fine and like bill murray sort of like looks up to him like you already you already know what you want in your life you already figured it out nobody's worried about max fisher even though he's failing out of high school <laughs> they all, you know he's like he already he's a successful guy even though he's right flunking. it's interesting yeah, it's a it's a very um, it's a it's a story for the ambitious, I would say. Like it's because yeah. uh, you know Max is you know again like we said he was he got into the school because of a play he wrote in second grade, and then he's into all these extracurricular extracurricular <laughs> activities, um, and uh, you know it, which is you know good you know to to be involved in that. You're not involved in other things, you know with the you know the drugs the kids do nowadays you know um you know you're not involved <laughs> in that uh stuff you know he's he's very much involved but yet um you know the it's kind of a cautionary tale of you know you still have your other priorities you still got to focus on your schoolwork in this case you know you know, you can be ambitious. Like I'm, I'm ambitious with this podcast, but I still have, you know, my wife and kids I got to attend to. And, you know, my, my day job I got to attend to, you know, it's, uh, it's, uh, but this movie, you know, it, it shows you that grades don't necessarily mean you're just a low life, you know, in a way, like it doesn't mean that he's not ambitious. He's not, you know, trying to be a good person and everything it's just he's focusing too much on the other things did any of that make sense (laughs) oh totally yeah i mean look i'd be i'd be thrilled if my kid went to a school where he learned how to be a a max fisher and had all these like interests and passions and stuff like that i wouldn't sure grades at that point you know right yeah 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 it's 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 uh yeah it's 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 great that he's ambitious but yeah he's just he's just too focused and it seems like this character gets too obsessed like he gets obsessed with the teacher and you know even his relationship with uh Bill Murray you know and uh 
Um, but yeah, I love their, their back and forth they have with, uh, him letting the bees in his hotel room <laughs> and, and then him running over his bike and then him cutting his brakes. <laughs> it's just, I mean, that one, that's the kind of thing. And I'm so glad he got arrested too. Cause I was like, yes. uh, I mean, otherwise I can't suspend my disbelief that much to think he wouldn't call the cops on this kid who tried to kill you. <laughs> <laughs> But he's even going to let that go because he's too special of a friend. You know what I mean? It's yeah, <laughs> definitely. <laughs> oh, man. And then, uh, you know, obviously we haven't talked about his relationship with his father. You know, he kind of pretends that his father's this, you know, neural surgeon because, uh, in fact, his father is a barber. It's not as noble. So he just kind of kind of fakes it kind of almost embarrassed of his father but he even grows in in that aspect uh seymour cassell is uh, uh his father castle yeah. seem i don't know but uh <laughs> yeah. but uh yeah That's great awesome. another great great casting um but yeah the, the relationship with his father i think is an interesting touch to this movie as well it is interesting it's interesting that he's so much older uh you know right as a 15 year old, you know, he's got like a seventies dad, you know, in the seventies, I'm saying it age wise, not to, right. Yeah. And that's interesting. And also, you know, when he sort of gives up on his life, he gets kicked out of Rushmore and Max and he's where he goes to public school. And even that's, that's horrible too. He sort of drops out of high school altogether. And he's like, Oh, screw it. This is it. And sort of the last thing he would ever want to do with his life is work at the barber shop. <laughs> and, and that's where he ends up. And I feel like it's heartbreaking for his dad. Who's like, look, this is my thing. I know this is like, the, this is like a punishment for, for you, but you know, man. Yeah. Rough. He, he, well, I, I love that. Uh, they even bring it up. Like Rushmore is almost like a, a thing to strive for. Like uh, Bill Murray, I think says the teacher is his Rushmore. Yeah. Um, and obviously Jason Schwartzman's Rushmore is Rushmore. Um, <laughs> but, <laughs> uh, his dad's Rushmore is, is, uh, being a barber, you know, that's, uh, you know, we all have our, our Rushmore, um, you know, it's, uh, our, our thing we kind of, uh, Kind of, kind of like our drug, you know, uh, so to speak. Um, yeah, there's just so much. Wes, and he just does such a great job. I, I guess we got to give credit to Owen Wilson as well because yeah. he's part of the <laughs> the writer as well. But, uh, but yeah, there's just so much packed in here for such a lighthearted like coming of age tale, you know. Yeah, and we had uh, Luke Wilson in there, and then the third <laughs> Wilson brother is also in that movie as the like PE coach. I can't remember his name right now. Oh yeah, uh, got it right here, Andrew Wilson. And there you oh, go. Yeah. Wow. Okay, I didn't. I did not realize that was uh, that was their brother. Look at that. Wow. Yeah. Got them all in. Got them all. And then also Wes Anderson's brother is in it too. It's like the guy who looks like Wes Anderson. It's like a <laughs> teacher. Yeah, he's in the scenes with uh, the the other Wilson. Sorry, you just said his name, right? Andrew Wilson. Andrew Wilson. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> I love how Max yeah treats uh, Luke Wilson. <laughs> I don't love how he treats him, but it's funny how he treats him. You know, it's for amazing. the movie's sake. <laughs> it's amazing because you had total freedom there again because he's just a kid. Like, who gives a shit? He can just he's just going to say whatever he wants. Uh, I remember <laughs> I remember watching the DVD. A commentary, or maybe that wasn't a thing. I just remember researching the hell out of this movie. Yeah, <laughs> them saying that that Luke Wilson came up with uh, their OR scrubs. Oh, are they on the day <laughs> when they were sitting there? Which is also a classic. Uh, that was one of another. <laughs> that joke is so stupid, but then Bill Murray's reaction to it makes the whole thing like fantastic because he's like he fucking loves that. Right. He, like laugh the whole movie. It's the only time he laughs the entire movie. <laughs> he says that. It's so great. It's, it's such a dad joke, you know. Like, oh, are they? <laughs> but yeah, like how he tells the waiter, like, oh, we're so sorry. I know we only. Thank you so much for accommodating us. We only, you know, said there was going to be three you know thank you for accommodating the extra person it's amazing <laughs> it's so passive aggressive it's Dick, yeah <laughs> i'm reminded um, now i'm just thinking about all the good actors in this movie the opening sequence of this of rushmore is max fisher's fantasy of him solving a difficult math equation <laughs> in front of a whole classical <laughs> kid which is so specific like just spot on way to like get him get his character out there in the open immediately you know everything about this kid yeah but the guy playing the math teacher 
that's like my almost my favorite performance in the whole movie dude is incredible <laughs> like he's good but he's also not trying at all like i would guess he's not an actor but he's also amazing I don't know. right yeah <laughs> Yeah, because yeah, he says like, yeah, you'll never have to do a math problem again. I'll see to yeah. it if you can solve it. <laughs> oh, this oh, th- that's just a joke. I put that up there as a joke. Yeah, it's never been solved. yeah. Uh, and then it comes up with this cappuccino. Uh, the whole thing is like unbelievable. That's so good. Oh, that's his man. fantasy. That's the one thing he's not actually good at is schoolwork. <laughs> right yeah exactly <laughs> but it's it's all about the the recognition and the you know that's. Uh, I mean, we, 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 I mean, that's kind of, uh, you know, he's a writer slash actor. He, he performs in his play. Is that, uh, I mean, is that kind of an actor's thing is getting that recognition? Like, is it, I'm sure. I mean, I'm yeah, sure. you would know. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, obviously it's, it's amazing to be, uh, up in front of people and having them respond in any way it would be it with laughter or clapping mm-hmm. or whatever you're doing. It's amazing. And I'm sure he, was totally got the bug or whatever because he did that because he's been writing plays and performing and stuff i'm sure yeah his he's yearning for uh, more of that acceptance I'm yeah sure. definitely uh, yeah it's... maybe that's why i like auditioning in front of people too you know you got to get in front because i don't do theater anymore it's been over 15 years it's such a tragedy oh wow uh, there's nothing like it it's amazing uh yeah I mean, I, I, I get to do when I'm lucky. I get to do some UCB shows when some friends of mine have shows that they'll have me come on and do like a guest spot or whatever. And it's what just, is a UCB show? All right, good, good to get <laughs> this out in the open. I'm just talking about it like it's a you know a household name. It, UCB is the Upright Citizens Brigade, and it is a uh, improv theater company that became a, like a teaching institution. And the founding members are all professional actors as Amy Poehler and Matt Walsh and uh, Matt Besser, all of which I've had the great pleasure of working with, except Amy Poehler, actually. Oh, I have not worked with Amy Poehler, but you would know, you know, um, Besser was shit. I mean, he's been on a lot of stuff. Uh, Matt Walsh, actually, uh, he he will be on the show uh, in a few weeks. No way. Yeah. Well, he's one of the great uh guys out there in show business for sure he's just a mensch and he was in veep with me yeah uh, mike mcclintock um there you in go. any case so the ucb it sort of in the early 2000s it started getting a lot of nor- notoriety as being like the go-to improv class that you got to take like there's groundlings there's improv olympic and then like ucb the hot one um <laughs> so they had classes in new york and it was a big deal in new york um and then they opened an, an la school and it's an even bigger deal in L.A. because oh man, people are flocking to these shows. Uh, it's like the only one of the few live theater experiences that you go to like seven days a week. Um, yeah. Different shows all the time. People are paying out the ass to take the classes. They're great classes, too. I, if you're asking me, it's worth the money. Um, but another thing that started happening is the casting directors and agents would go to UCB shows. So it started getting this reputation as being a thing where it's like, you got to do UCB show if you want to get an agent. And it's like, all right, okay. I mean, great for the business model, but uh, I don't know how much truth there is there, you know? Yeah. It's like, yeah, like in Seinfeld when the NBC do- execs are going to be there. Like, yeah, yeah. Oh, they, the NBC execs are going to be here and better be on your <laughs> yeah. best performance. Um, is uh, is stand up? Have you ever done stand up or anything? Is that uh-huh. in your. I just dabbled a little bit. Yeah. I, when I lived in, I went to uh, New York University. I went to the, the Tisch Acting School, School of Drama. Um, and while I was in New York, I would go to open mic nights and just sort of dabble a little bit there. Uh, I don't consider myself to be a stand up, but I love stand up comedy. I think it's a great art form. I wish that I was a stand up in certain ways because of how empowering it is it's just you up there you wrote yeah. all this you're performing all this no one else has a say if it's good it's because you're good and if it's bad it's because you're bad and it's just really awesome yeah um, i will say that i i'm more scared to do it in la than new york because <laughs> in new york it's more of a entertainment you know people are coming in from out of, out of uh, you know they're coming in the bridges and the tunnels they're getting drunk they're going out for a good time in sure. la it's like a bunch of like comedy writers Oh. Like I guess that's funny or whatever. I mean, the, and and I'm blowing this out of the water, but that's sort of my fear about yeah. <laughs> it's other stand-ups and people in Hollywood who are like, okay, rolling your eyes at you. <laughs> they're there to laugh. They're there to like 
see what's going on. And yeah, like, oh, is there any new talent, fresh talent out right. there that I need to be keeping my eyes on? You know, Again, that's, <laughs> I'm being crazy. There are. Yeah, that's just your talent. preconceived notion. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's how I talk myself out of it, basically. Yeah. But <laughs> the honest to God truth is it's just a lot of work and I don't know if I can work that hard. Yeah. <laughs> <You know? laughs> like I said, uh, I don't write and I should write and I don't do stand up. I should do stand up. It's, it's writing also, but I'm a sort of an old fashioned kind of actor, which is that I get auditions and then I audition for those parts and then I either get the job or I don't, which is sort of like 25% of the equation in your average actor's life. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Well, it's, it's funny. Cause I mean, it's uh yeah. Standing by yourself. Like that's, that's tough because I mean, even doing this podcast, like I, I usually have a co-host and like, if he's not here, like sometimes, you know, it's, it's tough to like, I have a buffer where if I don't have anything to say, I can have him say, luckily you were very easy to talk to. So it's, it's been, you know, flowing nicely, but yeah, it's nice to have that buffer instead of just you. Like it's all, it's all on you, dude. Like, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, uh, uh, any, any final thoughts on, on Rushmore 1998 Rushmore? Yeah. I mean, look, I'll, I was hesitant to choose it as my pick or whatever, because I thought, Oh, it's too obvious. Everybody, every kid loves that movie. But I'm like, well, I am not a kid anymore. I'm 36, and that movie came out before the year 2000. So <laughs> at this point, it's maybe a fresh enough look to bring up again. And if you're a fan of Wes Anderson's recent work, I would highly suggest that you check out Rushmore because I'm just going to say it. I think it's his best one. Yeah. Ten of Bombs, I'm- a close second. But those are just emotionally at a time in my life where those hit pretty hard. But I mean, yeah. Rushmore is unbelievable, man. It, well, it seems like he's he's gone more, uh, you know, not to, you know, it's not a criticism, but he's gone more fantasy-ish yeah. as he's gone, you know, totally more true. more out there. Um, whereas, you know, his early, like, Royal Tenen- Tenenbaums this, you know, it, were kind of more grounded and just kind of more... I guess relatable, I guess you could say so, but yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm definitely looking forward to French dispatch as well. So I, that's why another reason I was glad you chose this too. Cause yeah, it's kind of relevant because Wes Anderson, he's got a movie yeah. coming out, you know, bada bing, bada boom, you know, there's a bunch of movies so. I want to see right now, which is, that's, thank God it's finally happening. I got to see Dune and French dispatch and James <laughs> Bond. it's all coming. It's come, coming back. I just watched Dune and uh, I'm discussing it with Eric Griffin. Do you know him? I do, yeah, sure. He's yeah, really yeah, I'm, I'm uh, in about an hour. I'm, I'm going to be talking to him about it. So, uh, what, what should I know about Eric Griffin? Should I uh, be? Oh, worried? I don't know him personally. I'm just a fan. I mean, like I knew him from Workaholics, where he did yeah. this incredible. He did one of these rare things where he was sort of like a like a backgroundy day player guy, and he right. like, worked his way up to be a cast member, and now he's like a show business guy. Amazing, yeah. love Good that for him. Show. Good yeah. for him. Um, so yeah, I mean, obviously you got the what? What's the official title of the Lucille Ball movie? Oh yeah, it's called um, "Being the Ricardos." Being the Ricardos, uh, and that comes guess. out later on this year. Anything else you want to get out there? Where you, where can people follow you on Twitter, Instagram, all that shit? Uh, yeah, I uh, I quit Twitter in 2016, and I think God it's bless been, you. God my bless. Mental you. health has been never been better. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but I'm on I'm on Instagram. Uh, my Instagram handle, it's stupid, but it's a look. I got on Instagram in 2011, kids. So back then, <laughs> I was listening so to a lot of hip hop music, <laughs> as I still do. And I, it's Nelson Mode Squad is my handle. It's a Buster Rhymes reference for those of you who listen 90s hip hop. <laughs> that's um, the longest preface to an Instagram handle I've ever yeah. heard, and I love it. That's great. <laughs> I should just change the damn thing. I do have another piece of work coming out next, early next year, I think, is um, I did a, a Stars show on the on the channel Stars, which I guess Yes, don't, Stars. I'm familiar with. Yeah. I don't have it. I don't know how I'm going to watch this, but it's um, <laughs> it's a uh, it's a show about Watergate. It's like a period piece uh, starring Sean Penn and Julia Roberts. A very cool show. Um, Who do you play? I play sort of a like an amalgam of real people so they changed my name to a fictional person um but i'm like a special counsel for john dean who was a big part of covering up the watergate scandal and failing to do that i should say do you have Um, seen do you have scenes with those two actors at all 
I don't have any scenes with Sean Penn or Julia Roberts. All my scenes are with Dan Stevens, who I'm also a big fan of. Uh, he's an English guy who was on Dan Down Steve. Abbey, <laughs> but he was oh. also he was also um, wasn't in he that, in uh, that, that crazy Beauty. Hero Vision movie or whatever? Oh, but he was also um, was it, he was a beast in Beauty and the Beast? Hell yeah, that's right. <laughs> he is a handsome young man. Let me yeah, tell you. he's look at him. He, look at those blue baby blues I'm looking at right now on IMDb. Look at that. <laughs> that's awesome, man. Um, and then what is what, when does that Stars show come out? That's gonna be next year. I don't have a date for that that's yeah, all right called, um, well, called gaslit hmm, uh, maybe maybe you'll come on again next year to to, to promote it so yeah. <laughs> there you go he's like no i'm never coming back hey this um, is fun. I had a good time. I'll come back. yeah seriously no but honestly this has been great i'm so glad you chose rushmore such a great film wes this is our first wes anderson film i believe we've uh guest has chose uh chosen for the show so nice. uh thank you for that so good yeah, stuff and good uh ones. There's a ton of good ones. Thanks so much for coming on, my man. My pleasure. Thanks for having me. Well, there you have it, folks. Another episode in the books. Fun chatting with Nelson Franklin. He's, a, like I said, super down-to-earth guy. Super, super cool. Super nice. Uh, how many times can he add super before... Uh, uh, a sentence it's a good uh good adjective right anyway blockbustermentality.com that helps us a lot a lot when you just visit the site and uh if you see any ads you like hey you know click them see 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 if you can buy something i don't know i don't know is that what you're supposed to do well anyone who's made it this far into the episode i appreciate your hard work appreciate your dedication appreciate everything I love you. Follow us on Instagram at, what is it? Oh yeah, Blockbuster Mentality. See, I don't even know. Uh, Twitter at BlockbusterCast. BlockbusterMentality.com, like I said. Subscribe to us. Give us a review. Takes like 30 seconds on, uh, on, what do you call it? iTunes. Man, I can't, I cannot find words today, folks. It's uh, Veterans Day as I'm recording these uh, intros and outros. Got the day off work. So, but yeah. Are you still listening? Is that is that what's happening? Are you still listening? Cool. Go home. Go home. Why are you still here? Go. It's over. Get that reference? I hope you do. All right, folks, I'm done. All right. Uh, YouTube, too. I've been trying to promote that a little more. Uh, our numbers are much bigger on the podcast, but hey, I don't, I, I, I'm still trying to figure out YouTube algorithms and all that thing, but uh, it's been six years in the making, but you know, I'll, I'll learn someday. All right, folks. Well, that is it for me. For Nelson, I'm Ben, and as always, grab some popcorn, grab some snacks. We'll catch you guys at the movies. <laughs> <laughs>